But that was an important interview uh, that we just had with uh, Leo Zagami. Uh, you can find his book, The Last Pope, just by searching it and going to his publisher that we had on screen earlier. Now, we're going to go to break. We're getting them on 20 minutes late, but we'll go five minutes in the next hour. Then we have a fourth hour of Overdrive today, hosted by Anthony Gucciardi. I'll tell you about that later. It's going to be a hot hour. But uh, here's the headline. Earth is 20% darker, say experts. Now, this is from 2003, and they claim it's jet trails that are doing it. That's NASA. Now, I thought I'd show you that just to give you an idea of what even accidental geoengineering can do from their words. And clearly, California is having its weather manipulated. This is what the age of weather weapons is all about. We're going to delve deeply into it straight ahead. Even from the outside, it's clear. The hundreds showing up beat to a different drum. But stepping inside this packed Reading Auditorium is like walking into another world. Here, outlandish ideas like weather warfare and climate engineering, in other words, weather control, are accepted as basic fact. Climate engineering is the greatest single assault on the environment ever launched by humanity, without question. Dane Wigginton, lead researcher for Geoengineering Watch, is sounding the alarm. It's a responsibility. It's not an option. It's an obligation. Look in the center, between the wing plumes. His group claims this grainy, shaky video is part of a mountain of evidence they've uncovered. Means we have a secondary disbursement. Showing shadowy government forces are using planes to secretly spray fine particles of heavy metals like aluminum into the sky. The tankers fly at lower altitudes because they carry a larger payload. The purpose, they believe, is to block some of the sun's direct rays from reaching the Earth a desperate attempt to slow global warming. The list of corroborating material we have is immense, including lab tests that prove the same elements used, named in geoengineering patents, aluminum, barium, and other heavy metals, are raining down on us in absolutely massive quantities. If you're skeptical, this won't help. Dane claims the spraying, he says, is happening off the coast of California, comes with an incredibly severe side effect. The heavy metal particles, he says, are blocking rainfall, effectively steering our rain somewhere else, leading to their shocking truth. Climate engineering, they say, is to blame for the harshest recorded drought in California right. history. That's CBS 13 that we're analyzing there. Dave Whittington joins us right now. His background is solar energy. I've been involved in documentary films that he's been in. He was formerly employed by Bechtel Power Corps. Bechtel's been involved in weather engineering. He worked for one of the uh, first commercial solar electric facilities in the U.S. He's an off-the-grid residence located on a 1,600-acre wildlife preserve in northern California wilderness. One of the founding members of geoengineeringwatch.org and the staff writer for articles there, geoengineeringwatch.org. This is a short segment, long segment coming up. But the reason I wanted to get him on is CBS News Sacramento and others have been picking it up going to city council members, going to town halls with 200, 300, 400 people, you know, inside wearing suits and ties, scientists talking about this. So they show some college kids in a drum circle outside and go, oh, look, they're kooks. And they selectively don't show the fact that we have the patents, we have the admissions, we have Secretary of Defense Cohen in Army Times 97 admitting it. Uh, we have Bill Gates running a secret program for the government, $4 billion, $5 billion a year. Uh, we have the father of weather weapons admitting they were doing it back in the 70s. We have the London Guardian. Earth is 20% darker, NASA says, 2003. 2014, that's now 30% darker. You can simply type in to a search engine satellite photos of jet trails over North America, and it shows the whole continent covered. We know there's ice crystals. We know those are natural. But they persist now. We have the patents where it's added to the jet fuel and dispersed when there's other special aircraft. And clearly, we've had weather folks on, we've had meteorologists on, who've looked at the water, the, the, the storms coming in that would normally dump water in California, Oregon, and, and, and Seattle up in Washington, and it's being killed before it gets there. It's being dumped into the ocean. You put the salts in, you put the ionizers in, you put the nuclei in, and it makes it come down early. It's 101. So tell us what's coming up in the next 35 minutes or so, sir. Good job getting more and more attention. Uh, they're really upset that they can't spend this, uh, Dane. 
Well, thank you for giving your your voice to this issue so often, Alex, and all you've done for the, the greater good. And on this particular issue, this is the noose around our neck. And this is what so many people need to realize that whatever other challenges we face, if we don't face this challenge, nothing else will matter soon. And in regard to the California drought, that is a one plus one equals two equation. When we know they're aerosolizing off the U.S. West Coast, too many condensation nuclei, as you stated, and they can not only reduce the rain before it arrives, they can also migrate the rain directly over the top of us by introducing too many condensation nuclei, Alex, and they're, they're doing that in conjunction with the ridiculously resilient ridge. This is a new meteorological term that refers to the high pressure that blocks all the rain completely. That's a result of the ionosphere heater. So they have several means of blocking the rain from the west, but they're wreaking havoc all over the globe, Alex. And, and as you know, we're going to come back. Dubai is in the BBC with these uh, microwaves making it rain. They can also stop it from raining. So this is old technology. We know they've got that going on as well. We know they're shutting down our power plants, doing everything they can to shut America down. If they kill the California breadbasket, America's done. And it looks like they've been successful. We're going to come back, give you the floor to walk through all these exhibits. If you're not a TV viewer, you should be, because you're going to see a lot of evidence. Infowars.com forward slash show. Send the feed to friends and family. We're on the. Here's the simple synopsis. Anyone with a search engine can find Library of Congress, United Nations treaties, the patents, the films that have been made. So many documentaries, though, act like it's a mystery that they're going to solve. It's like, the mystery. Does the Washington, D.C. Capitol exist? Let's find out. And two hours later, you find out, yes, it exists. No. There's no having to go prove the Pacific Ocean exists. We know it's been discovered. We've seen it. It's been documented for thousands of years. Or the Atlantic. Or the Indian Ocean. But the establishment treats us like pygmies who you know, are out in the middle of Africa or something and have never seen civilization. And they go, there's no chem trailing. There's no weather modification going on. When it was declassified a decade ago, I had been living since the father weapons on, weather weapons on. They could take a clear sky in Vietnam and rain 10 feet of water anytime they wanted on the Ho Chi Minh Trail with less than seven aircraft. And that was with primitive technology. They could create hurricanes. They could kill hurricanes. They could strengthen them. They could weaken them. They could steer them. They could control them. He came on my show on radio and TV and then got a visit by Homeland Security would never talk to me again. Because he got declassified. I got his name. I got him on. Fox News picked it up after I had him on. I mean, they got upset. Stanford Research Institute, 1967 certified with the Naval Weapons Laboratory that they could create and control hurricanes with just aerosol spray, but with giant solar panel arrays and magnetic arrays and microwave arrays, they could completely control it. Project to turn the desert green trials in Qatar. And again, they're using microwave systems to do that as well. But then when we talk about, hey, there's a giant Department of Energy program and all the admissions under scientific terms... It's never called chemtrail. You never find a FEMA camp saying, where's the FEMA camp document? It's not called a FEMA camp. It's called an emergency center under the Establishment Act. It's called a civilian inmate labor camp. It's called a resettlement program, Army War College. Then you can read all about it and how they're going to break up families, put us in different FEMA camps. It's at Army.mil. All the time folks call in or try to show up at the office or send me letters going, I didn't believe it. I looked it up. Army.mil. They're building the camps. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But see, it's called another name, not a FEMA camp. So Dave Whittington, uh, who heads up geoengineeringwatch.org, again, has really been getting folks uh, for years uh, concerned about this. Now that the drought is driving people out, the question is, what is geoengineering for folks that don't know? What is the evidence? We should walk through it. If you're a TV viewer, you can see as we go along here just what we threw together today. Uh, for this interview that walks through exactly what's happening and the history of this situation. We have the weather and climate modification manual that shows the aircraft nozzles, satellite images, and how to control the weather. Uh, we have the tree die-off from the aluminum dioxide. Uh, we have the uh, NASA satellite photos making the Earth darker 
Uh, we have the geoengineering patents. We have it all. That's what's crazy is that it's so admitted. So, sir, you've got the floor. Break it down for us exactly what we're facing and why would they want to kill the breadbasket of America? Everything you stated, Alex, is spot on. In regard to climate engineering, which is weather warfare, there's no delineation between the two. Weather warfare amounts to biological warfare because all of us on the ground have to breathe, inhale, and absorb what's being sprayed above us. So in regards to the California drought, again, the equation is simple. When you aerosolize on this scale, you radically disrupt the hydrological cycle. And I would challenge any of your listeners or encourage your listeners to look at disseminations I did two years ago, for example, engineered drought catastrophe target California, and ask yourself if that data from two years ago wasn't exactly on target. Now, the reason it's on target is because as they, as they continue these programs, it couldn't not happen. That same data was presented to Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom, Lieutenant Governor of California at the state capitol by myself nearly two years ago. There's no question they know what's going on. There's no question Lieutenant Governor knows. Uh, people in the EPA know. I've had high-level EPA meetings. I've been in Barbara Boxer's office, spoken in front of the California Energy Commission, who knows they're losing 20% of the state's rain, 20 to 40% from, quote, particulates of unknown origin. This is the biggest elephant in the room, Alex, by far. And the planetary disruption it's causing is far beyond what most people imagine to be possible. But as you correctly outlined, this weather warfare, and that's exactly what it is, it's not for the common good. There is no benevolence in the climate engineering programs. It's weather warfare, which amounts to biological warfare, again, because of the contamination. And I would encourage people to simply look at the amount of data we have, the photographs of the nozzles, as you just showed, when people argue, is this or isn't it going on, we have the historical records, as you correctly outlaid. We have photographs of the retrofit nozzles mounted even on commercial planes. We have photographs of these tankers spraying, shutting on and off at altitude, military tankers, KC-10s, KC-135s, C-17s. There's no argument that this is going on, Alex. There certainly isn't, and Dane Wigington is our guest today at geoengineeringwatch.org. Uh, please continue laying out from your deep research what the end game of this is, because they admit the geoengineering is going on. It's going on on a planetary scale. They can even do lethal testing under U.S. Code Title 50, Chapter 32, if it's, quote, for research. That's why they never say it's, it's, an, it's, it's now an operational phase. It's always in research phase, but it's so huge. I remember they did naval testing 18 years ago in South Texas, and they had 30-foot floods in, in creeks and things. It, it killed hundreds of people. And there was a footnote in the Associated Press that the Navy was doing geoengineering testing in that area, but they weren't involved in the floods. Uh, so we just see these little type of things pop up. The cataclysms they have already caused, the human health impact already caused, could never be calculated. Ultimately, what these programs are about is power and control. Even if we trace them back to their inception, their, their first major deployments in the late 40s that we, are, we see in government documents, in fact, one of which I've, I found on the NASA archives, 80 pages long from 1966. This is on geoengineeringwatch.org. Presidential document outlining the scope and scale of these programs, even as of that time, 10 major universities involved, 12 federal agencies involved, and yet we have CBS it was banned news. by a U.N. treaty that we signed in 1978. Uh, correct. After Project Popeye was so successful in Vietnam over the Ho Chi Minh Trail. But yet there were loopholes in that banning that did not prohibit countries from experimenting over their own populations. Right. And nobody's paying attention to the, the U.N. Uh, mandates anyway. So uh, the bottom line. And notice, right now, folks, we're finishing each other's sentences. And if you're a radio listener, we're putting documents on screen. We'll go to the second group. We're not making this up. This is in public view. How frustrating is it for you, Dane, to, to spend your life fighting this, to see your beautiful, uh, you know, uh, retreat dying, to see the trees dying all over California, to see the animals dying, to, to have the soil test with the aluminum dioxide off the chart? Uh, the Forestry Service, I know I've talked to you and others, admits, yeah, something's happening. I mean, this is crazy. And, and, and then they just sit there and make fun of it. Well, it's like living in, in, again, Groundhog Day, where you wake up every day hoping there's some sort of a, of a uh, consciousness around you that starts to stir. And, and yet, until now, we have the entire science community, 
governmental agencies all towing the line for the power structure, all doubling down on the lie because they're so committed to the lie that this isn't going on. They're so committed to the lie that these are